So I'd like to say something about um, blockchain leaks, what we're doing. Um, you already mentioned ICO, it's like, like the, the first big use case we see in Ethereum. ICO. I mean, you shouldn't be too hungry about ICO. I think the, the legal aspect is, is really crucial about this, so um, um, you should really take care. Um, what, what we do is, um, and what we think that is that the next big use case, uh, we're dealing with digital identities. Um, so maybe you know Uport, and maybe, maybe uh, you guys know this, or maybe Civic, they just did an ICO as well, and I think they raised about uh, 33 million. Yes. Um, so, do you know anything, any, any other digital identity solutions? Are you, are you informed in, in this? Also? Yeah, humanic. please. Humanic. humanic. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not really a digital identity solution. It's, 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 it's I'm sorry? It's a scam. Right? It's a scam. <laughs> this is your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. I'm sorry? They, they say that they are identical solutions for people like Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Yes, it's, yeah, okay. Yeah, please. Thank you. Jeremy, I think Deutsche Bank, Axel Springer, and also Allianz Insurance Company, they formed an alliance to create a digital identity solution. So far, they have just said they tend to do it, and probably they also do it based on blockchain, but they want to, like, yeah, want to form something in Germany, which can match up with, like, Google, so this this project is called DIPP at the moment. This is the working title about this. It's a it's a cross industry solution that uh, has um, a certain uh, kind of services in it. So it's about identity, it's about payment, and it's about data. Um, and uh, it's it's like a single sign on to all the different uh, industry partners there. Uh, so this is something that is uh, announced right now, and it should be. Uh, I mean, it should. Uh, as I know, it should be uh, based on blockchain. And, um, so, okay. So, but there were some hands as well. Do you know CryptoTech? CryptoTech, yeah, they're based in Cologne. Yeah. Yes. Are they doing identity? They're, they're not. I think they do it all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're. That's what they say. Yeah. They're, 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 they're research at the Yes. You bought it. Yeah. Yes, but you bought is. Um, what we call a self servant identity, Uport, and um, this is what, what we differ um, between Uport and what we do with blockchain helix because um, the American way is always different than the German way. So in, in Germany, you have a regulatory and a legal framework or uh, environment that is, uh, first of all, everything is kind of forbidden. Yeah. <laughs> everything is regulated, and then you have a certain certain ways to, to raise this up. And the other way around in, in, in America is everything is allowed first of all, but they have high fines uh, if, if you achieve the system. So it's kind of a different uh, mindset between uh, uh, American systems and, and German systems. I think you, 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 you it's okay like to say it like this, Christopher? We have a yeah. we have compliance, compliance officer. Compli the, compliance, the official <laughs> compliance officer. So we, we should give you a badge or something. Yeah. He's actually from Heuking, he's a, he's a lawyer, uh, so to, <laughs> to point this out. <laughs> uh, so but what we actually have here is, um, uh, with Blockchain Helix, uh, we're trying to um, um, raise up a, a, a digital identity solution uh, that uh, um, really has uh, a fit to the, the legal framework in, in Germany and the regulatory framework. So there are a lot of different commandments uh, that we need to um, to provide so there is a, there are a lot of different things like uh, the right to be forgotten or something that is uh, with the, um, there's something that's called GDPR uh, Datenschutzgrundverordnung in German um, there, there are a lot of different commands that should be in uh, in operations in uh, next year Christoph is this correct next year I think yes. it's April April 2018 yes. So um, this is something that is um, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, things that you need to um, to, um, to take care of if you um, want to do something in, in Germany about this. And the idea that we, we have about the digital identity solution is uh, first of all, um, as, as we are a startup, first of all we need a, a, a business model, and the business model that we have here is um, 
um, the KYC process. This is something it's, it's called the know your customer, know your client process. This is one of the biggest pain points in financial services and, and uh, over financial services. Um, this, the idea is um, if you if you sign up or you, you onboard uh, onto a, to a to a bank, for instance, uh, you need to um, to have all your your personal data um, set up to the to the banking side, and, and they need to um, have this in a, in a legal manner that they always have trust to this uh, this data, and the, you, you do this over and over again. And what we have with um, uh, Blockchain Helix is <coughs> what we call sharing workforce, so that we can simply share this information in between financial services. Um, so I, I don't know if, uh, if if there's any question from the technical side. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to show this to you right now, so I think this is the easiest way. <laughs> so, um, this is a live system um, to give you an idea. Uh, what we have here, um, it's a so-called federated or consortium chain. So what we have here is, it's, it's an Ethereum um, blockchain, but we're not using the, the public Ethereum blockchain, so we, we're using a fork version, uh, because uh, from a, a legal aspect, it's, it's simply not possible at the moment. Um, to get uh, to get this um, uh, done with the actual public blockchain at the moment, uh, so um, we're running the um, the different nodes uh, worldwide, and uh, um, also public, right? I'm sorry. Yours is also public. No, it's a federated so uh, consortium chain. So the different nodes are named nodes. So these are the different we call them trust providers. So um, it's a it's a, a it's a closed system, but it it has. Uh, um, through the, the uh, application itself, it has a, 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 an entry point. Um, yeah, we're running this at the moment, we're running this on the... Uh, right. Yeah, good eyes. Uh, running this on the, on the Bloomix um, uh, Cloud Foundry at the moment, because we are IBM partners, but um, we actually, I don't know if uh, one of you, uh, some of you are familiar with, we're running this on, on Docker containers. <coughs> Uh, to be highly flexible and have, do not have any kind of vendor lock there. So, um, and um, to, to get this, this technology stack uh, set, um, we have a, a different um, um, different nodes and uh, we're running, um, the, the main data actually are not stored on the blockchain because it's, it's personal data and it's simply it's not possible because we have a lot of binaries as well. Uh, so we store um, the actual information in, in a clustered big data database uh, on top of that, and as we're using um, Cloud Foundry, we can get um, a physical abstraction layer in between uh, so, so that we can still have uh, security and we store the information there uh, completely encrypted. But the and information is then central, so it's against actually the digital. No, it's not central, it's, it's clustered as well. I mean, it's, of course, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a database that is uh, all the information is uh, on every single um, point, but it's still clustered, so there's no um, there's no single point of failure there. Yeah. It's an active active. It's this yeah. It's, I I wouldn't call it distributed. It's, it's clustered. You you shouldn't uh, uh, be too much with distributed. So there's there's still a, a classic way to to uh, get a clustered databases. This is it's nothing nothing wrong about this. Um, but why so, not store the data in the, in the blockchain? I'm sorry. Why, why not store it in the blockchain? Why we do not store in a blockchain? Yeah, it's safer, it's, uh, it doesn't have uh, failure, it's also proof, it's not scaling, I say. First of all, it's not scaling. The second thing is uh, blockchain is, is simply not good for storing a um, big amount of data. Uh, the third thing is, uh, as I already said, we, we have the, um, uh, the commandment uh, for the right to be forgotten. So as a blockchain is something that's immutable, uh, you, you simply can't do this. Uh, the third thing is that we believe that data should belong to the user themselves. So uh, what we're actually um, doing there is, uh, first of all, right now we're, we're doing this with a big data approach, but um, we're just uh, planning to um, get this with a, a cloud data storage providers so that you own your own data. So the identity, you have this identity, uh, you got this, and um, yeah, it, it, it's really working. You can do this with IPFS, it's a, it's a yeah, you know this one? My question. Yeah, there's, there are a lot of different uh, solutions you can use. I mean, I, you can use IPFS. I don't know if you, some of you are familiar with this. It's a, it's a distributed file service, so to say. Yeah? 
So, and um, there, there are a lot of different ways to, to actually do this. But the main idea about this is uh, if, you, if you're dealing with data as a, as a provider, uh, and these are um, uh, highly sensitive data, you always try to get rid of this data. <laughs> this is the main idea why you simply want to, um, want to do this uh, in the way that the, the data simply actually are owned by the, by the user themselves. Yeah. So what we have here is, um, uh, yeah, we have, uh, these are the, the new blocks that actually have been, been mined on our systems. Uh, there are no pending transactions right now. Um, this is, I, I guess you're familiar with these, uh, these dashboard uh, appearances. Uh, so, but first of all, um, you, can, you can simply sign up to our system and set up your own account and you have, we have a, a history of what's, what's, what's been done with this, uh, with this identity. Um, and first of all, um, you simply go through this wizard in order to uh, provide the, the basic data that you need for any kind of, of um, yeah, uh, uh, exchange in between different parties in order to make business. Uh, so it, you can use this data um, to sign up to a bank account, to, to an insurer, whatever, so these are the basic KYC data. Uh, you can go through this, um, through this wizard. Uh, and you already see that um, uh, the information is um, all the the, uh, the single fields are actually trusted. So we store this in a, in a very um, uh, um, atomic way. So it's uh, it's very much um, flexible, and uh, you can trust information. You can you can add trust to a single fields. So this is uh, highly important if you uh, have, for instance, an identity and you simply move houses. So the address needs to be trusted again. So this is the main idea behind this. Um, and you already see that certain information are trusted by, um, by another party. So this is um, um, what we call the, the trust provider side. I'm going to explain this in a minute. And um, so you can, you can add any kind of information. You can even add... Um, a lot of different information here. So we have a, a driver license, for instance. It's, it's a kind of a formula here. And uh, we uh, also um, have the, um, the ability to um, connect this with your EID. So we're working right now with, with Autada. It's a startup that's based in, in, in Darmstadt in order to, to sign up to our system with the, uh, with the EID uh, through an NFC uh, app uh, that you can use actually at the moment only on, on Android. Uh, iOS is still uh, prohibited to use the NFC uh, interface, uh, but uh, this will change, I guess, fairly soon. And um, you can you can even upload any kind of information to your to your prime identity. So everything you need in order, if you need some kind of um, um, approval, that your income statement, for instance, for any kind of of uh, of contract that you have with, with other parties. And first of all, this information is only provided by you, so uh, it's it's simply not trusted. So what we what you need then is uh, you go uh, through a process where you, you have this this QR code. You can use this as a web app as well with your with your smartphone, and go to um, go to the other side. So it's the it's the trust provider side where you simply use this QR code in order to um, give this QR code to over the desk or with a video ident um, to the other side and and. Um, this information can be scanned in 